I have discovered that when I record, I breathe too loudly and there is not enough of you. So I'm, I'm fixing that by recording you now and holding the camera as far away from myself as I can. Mm. So it doesn't sound like I'm really panting. <laughs> so, well, what are we up to today? We've got an hour or so, a little, little snippet of time, so we're just finishing up. which is the reflectix on the ceiling, finishing up the insulating there. So we can get the ceiling up. Yay! That's a nice flask you got there. <laughs> Very cute. <laughs> Nice what are you nervous about, my love? What am I nervous about? Specifically, right now. So, myself and me have just been having a conversation about the roof cladding. Hang on. My bottle is making like a noise. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mia and I have just been having a conversation about the roof cladding. And I have Rob related concerns. So, one concern is around efficiency and how to best use the cladding we have because we're going to have to cut it down because one piece of cladding doesn't cover the whole roof. Uh, the cladding is three meters long three meters. and the whole roof is like 360, 360. something like that. Um, so we're going to have to cut it so there's the concern of wasted cladding, uh, which is a minor concern in the grand scheme of things, but still, there's a wasted cladding. There is a concern of where those points meet. That sounds like a bit of a... Sounds a bit mean, doesn't it? Yeah, uh, I mean, we don't want it to, you, to look up at the ceiling and be like, oh, there's a big three centimetre gap because we cut slightly at an angle or the angle of the van where they meet. Um, so we're discussing probably having those meeting points at various places across the roof so there isn't just a line somewhere, correctly or incorrectly. Um, but the biggest concern, um, we've got three up already, and putting those completely straight lits in was tricky. There's a lot of resistance when you move, like you push the cladding along and get it to fit nicely. Really happy with how it looks so far. But that same process here, when the curvature of the van means this cladding is going to need to, I don't know how much that will show on camera, but it will need to bend. It shows a bit. And it's flimsy stuff. So I'm concerned about the difficulty of getting a curved bit of cladding in. I'm concerned about how it will cope with that stress over time. So basically, we, we are paused right now and doing this video as a procrastination on something that might not work the way we want it to. Just have to see. Fingers crossed.
Mia don't ask no questions. <laughs> Views. Yeah. I realise I'm a lot more self-critical of myself than I am of you, so otherwise I help. This was supposed to just be a background thing, but are you um, allowed to say something? I mean, that has it's become like a therapy session. Do you hear that, guys? Me is more self-critical of herself than me. Don't let that be the case. Give us a like and subscribe <laughs> to make her feel better about herself. Yeah, that yeah. is the most, like, sharky you've <laughs> ever sounded. That's actually quite scary. I don't know if I'll even put this in. <laughs> We're not actually like this. <laughs> Tell us, Bob. What's your question? Okay, Mia said, take that to the piece of wood. So that got us onto the topic of the band, Take That. And I asked the question, how did Gary Barlow end up the, like, the name you associate with Take That other than Robbie Williams? So how did Robbie Williams and Gary Barlow become the names you associate with Take That? And not the other guys. And not the other guys. Mark someone and someone. Leave it in the comments below. Were there four? I don't know. I think there were four. There were five, weren't there? With Robbie Williams and then Robbie Williams left. Um, leave it in the comments below. Yeah, wow. Why is Gary Barlow the most famous of the Take That band when they are only four men strong? Why? Let us know. <laughs>